In this section, we're going to talk about deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning is the kind of reasoning that we do a lot of times, okay? And so when we're talking about deductive reasoning, we're talking about things where we're using logic, okay? So we're using logic to deduce facts. And so right away, we're using logic not observation. Okay, we're using logic, not observation. And so this right here is one of the most important parts that you can understand. So to understand the distinction between inductive and deductive, observation is inductive. Deductive is using logic. And so let's look at a couple of examples of this. Okay, so these are taken from example one. There's a myth that toilets and sinks drain in opposite directions in the northern and southern hemisphere. However, if you were to observe sinks draining in the two hemispheres, you would see that the myth is false. So we are gonna try to decide if this is inductive or deductive. I look and I see the word observe. And I remember that deductive reasoning is not observation. And so I'm gonna go ahead and call this inductive. Okay, so it's based upon observation. Let's look at number two. There's a myth that you should not touch ba a baby bird that has fallen from its nest because the mother bird will disown the baby if she detects human scent. However, biologists have shown that birds cannot detect human scent. Therefore, the myth cannot be true. I don't see the word observe in here. I do, however, see that studies have shown something, okay? And so I'm using a piece of information to say birds can't detect human scent and I'm going to use logic to apply it to the situation where a human would touch a bird who's fallen from the nest. And so here I've used deductive and logic to draw the conclusion. Okay, so I've used lo I'm using logic to draw my conclusion because it's, it's scientific fact, okay? And so here's one that you can try on your own. See if you can pause it right here and see if you can figure out what exactly is going on in this one. Is it inductive or deductive? There's a myth that an eel skin wallet will demagnetize credit cards because the skin of the electric eels used to make the wallet holds an electric charge. However, eel skin products are not made from electric eels. Therefore, the myth cannot be true. Once again, I don't see the word observe. However, I need to understand the distinction. Am I testing this? Am I seeing if this is true? Did I make an eel skin wallet? No, I didn't make an eel skin wallet and test to see if this is true. I'm saying it's not made from eel skin of electric eels. So it must not be able to be true. And so this is deductive. Okay, this is deductive reasoning because we deduced that it couldn't possibly demagnetize the credit cards because there's no electric eel skin used. Okay, and so that's the distinction that we're making. Now, other conclusions that we can make when we're talking about logic and we're doing these kinds of things with statements, with conditionals, we talked about last time, if P then Q, if it's a true statement, so it must be true, and P is true, then Q is true. If I take the bus to work, I will not have my car. I took the bus to work. So what can I deduce? That I don't have my car. Okay, and so that's the law of detachment. We're detaching P from Q. Okay, so let's look at how this works. Determine if each conjecture is valid by the law of detachment. Okay, so if two segments are congruent, then they have the same length. Okay, my conjecture would be that AB is equal to xy because they told me also this ab is congruent to xy so i would i would imagine that ab is the same length as xy well let's figure out if this is true okay if two segments are congruent they have the same length okay we said that they are then congruent so this is p this is q 
we said that P is true. So therefore, this must be true, okay? The first part was true. Yes, they are congruent. So then I was able to say, then they must be equal, okay? So given, if you are tardy three times, you must go to detention. If P, then Q, okay? Is P true? Is it true? Well, this isn't even P. That's not P. That's more like Q. So we've said that Shay is in detention. Well, if she's in detention, she might have been tardy three times. But she also, she also might have been fighting. She might have cheated on a homework assignment. She might have been something else, okay? So the conjecture is that she was tardy three times. Okay? The conjecture is she was tardy three times, but this is not true. Because we've detached the two clauses and we found that it's not true because she could be in there for something else, okay? And so we're using logic to evaluate these statements, okay? We have another law. It's called the law of syllogism. It's also called the chain law, okay? So if P, then Q, and if Q, then R are true statements, then P to R is a true statement. So we would say, if P, then Q, if Q, then P. So we could deduce that if P, then R. Okay? Chain law. Following the chain, cutting out the middle. So let's see. Determine if each conjecture is valid by the law of syllogism. The measure of angle A is less than 90, then A is acute. Seems true. If A is acute, then it is not a right angle. Seems true. So our conjecture would be, if the measure of angle A is less than 90, angle A is not a right angle. Okay? So, our P clause. This would be P. This would be Q. So then Q is repeated here. So this is R. So we have said we're going to go if P, then R. Yes, we can make this because it's, it's true. This is true. The law of syllogism is true. So this is true. If the measure of angle A is less than 90, then it's not a right angle because it's got to be something less than 90. See if you can do the next one on your own. You can go ahead and pause it. There's a little trick to it, so I'm going to go right through it. But if you want to try it, pause it. If a number is divisible by 4, so we're going to label this P, then it is divisible by 2, Q. If a number is even, hmm, does that look like P or Q? No, so I guess we'll have to call that R. Then it is divisible by 2. Well, that's Q. Okay? So, the conjecture is, if a number is divisible by 4, then it is even. So our conjecture seems to be true, but let's look at the chain law for this one. If P, then Q. Then it goes, if R, then Q. Okay? Have we completed the chain? Do they connect? Did we say, if something, then something else? If that's something else, then yet another something is true. No, we've, we've skipped a step. And so we cannot use the law of syllogism. The law of syllogism cannot be applied because we are saying the two things are unrelated. We have three statements here that are not in the correct order. Okay? And so finally, we're going to wrap up with applying the laws of deductive reasoning. So we're going to try to draw a conclusion from this information they have given us. If a team wins 10 games, I'm just going to go ahead and label them P and Q and R if necessary. Then they play in the finals. Q. If a team plays in the finals, Q. 
Matthew. Then they travel to Boston, R. And then they want to, uh, us to assume that P happened. So we have P then Q, and we have Q then R, and they've told us P is true. Okay, so what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that the Ravens traveled to Boston. Okay, because if they won 10 games, then they're going to be in the finals. And if they play in the finals, they have to play in Boston. So we're going to assume that because they won 10 games, they're going to travel to Boston. Okay, so you see how this works. I'm going to do likewise for the bottom one. If you want to pause it, that's more than fine. Okay, if two angles form a linear pair, P, then they are adjacent, Q. If two angles are adjacent, Q, then they share a side, R. Angle one and angle two form a linear pair. So let's draw this out. If P, then Q. If Q, then R. And we are assuming that they form a linear pair. Okay, so what, what are we looking at here? We're looking at P is true. Okay, so P is true. What does that mean for us? What conclusion can we draw? Well, if they're a linear pair, then they're adjacent. So we can assume that they're adjacent. But we can also assume that because they're adjacent, then they share a side. So we could say angle one and angle two share a side. Okay, so you see how these chain laws and things work. All right, now this stuff can be confusing. So if we need to go back and rewatch it, make sure you're asking questions in the margin, writing them down, seeing what you need to ask me tomorrow. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.